Leeds United over the past few years have had something of an emotional roller coaster. Whether it's going through the journey with Bielsa to get themselves back into the promised land of the Premier League, or it's been the decline that has been a car crash of the past season in 22 slash 23, and then ending it on the abysmal note of Sam Allardyce coming in and managing for four games and not being able to put two pennies together to get any sort of points total that would make them survive. It's been a pretty harsh time for these United fans, and today I am going to be trying to rebuild them to the point where we are getting them back into the promised land of the Premier League that they so desperately want to be a part of, and also potentially may win them some trophies. So we're going to play the next five seasons, and we're going to see where we end up by the end of those five seasons. And as always, guys, if you do enjoy the episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I think the first thing to do, because you can probably see it on the screen, is we have played a few games already. Let's show you the transfers and who we've sold, because there's been a lot of outgoings, and who's coming in. So as you can see on the screen, we do have quite a lot of transfers that have gone out at this moment in time. Um, we have finished the transfer window at this point, and there are a lot of players that have left. And to be honest, a lot of them were in the process of when I'd holidayed to this point and put myself in at the beginning of June. A lot of them had already been put in place. So I'll run through what's happened um, in terms of the players. And yeah, we'll get into it straight away for you. So in total for transfers, we've made about 105 million in terms of sales. Um, the first you can obviously see is Tyler Roberts. We sold him for 2.4 million to Shakhtar. Liam Cooper going over to Atletico Pamplona. Um, Tyler Adams to Milan again 30 million for Tyler Adams I don't think is something we could really say no to a lot of these deals a lot of Leeds fans are probably thinking why have you got rid of these players you could have probably kept hold of them with the wage budget that we had it was going to be very difficult to keep hold of them and we do have quite a sizable chunk of wage budget left now because we've got rid of so many players but I think when you see the players that I brought in both in terms of planning for this season and a little bit for the future it'll make a bit more sense. So, with that being said, we've obviously got Stuart Dallas going to Atlanta. We've got, um, in terms of another big name, we've got Sonny Perkins. I tried to keep hold of Sonny. He's a really talented youngster for Leeds, and I'm sure a lot of Leeds fans would agree. But for some reason, he just wanted to leave. So, we sold him to Brentford um, for potentially up to £16 million. We've then got um, Helda Costa going out on loan, Firpo going out on loan. And then we had Diego Lorente coming back from loan. He's gone out permanently now to Olympiacos for 2.2 million. Struik was another one that want, really wanted to leave. Um, and I tried to get 30 million for him, but no one was paying it. So he's gone to Porto for about 20 odd million. Um, and then the next sort of big one um, was a couple more loans in Rutter going out for a loan to Montpellier. And Dan James going out on loan again to Nottingham Forest. So those are the transfers that have gone out. And now for the transfers that have come in. And we've made some pretty decent deals, I think, in terms of how we've gone about this. Now, don't let it fool you in terms of the balances that we've got here of 105 million going out and 20 million being spent. Because I only got like 25, 20% of the transfer totals that, that we got here. So I had next to no money at the start. Fortunately, there was a bit of money that came in from the relegation. Um, so we were able to make a couple of bigger signings towards the end of the window. But again, most of it is bringing in a bit of experience and a couple of youngsters that I think will help us in the long run. So without further ado, so let's start with the biggest transfer that there'll be for most Leeds fans. And that will be bringing in James Milner on a free transfer. We all know how much James Milner means to Leeds. It's the club where he started, the club where he scored his first goal, where he broke the record that Rooney had held for a very short period of time. He was a great servant for Leeds, and he unfortunately was there when it started going downhill for Leeds, and he was one of those players that got sold. He obviously holds the club near and dear, as do the fans hold him near and dear because of the success he's had over the course of his career. So bringing him back was kind of a no-brainer. And when considering he only wanted a 40k contract, I thought for someone that's probably going to bring a lot of experience to the youngsters, do a solid job. And if we ever need an emergency backup at left or right back, if maybe who knows one day a striker, then he can do a job. So we've brought him in for a season and that'll probably be about it. We'll see if he retires or not at the end of this. 
But yeah, why not bring James Milner in for a, for a cheeky one? So yeah, I thought it was a good deal. So another free transfer we made was a right back in the firm of Dujon Sterling. Um, again, a youngster from Chelsea. He's got a bit of potential, pretty cheap contract as well. Um, and he came for a free. It was kind of a no-brainer because I thought we were going to lose Christiansen, our main right back. Um, he hasn't actually gone, so we did sign a couple of right backs to cover for him if he did go, but it hasn't turned out to be the case. But it, but I don't mind having that potential there that we have got with the two right backs that we bought. But yeah, Dujon Sterling is our latest signing. So we brought in Andrea Bellotti in on a free transfer from Rome, and basically... I can't really justify or be giving you a straight answer as to what, how on earth we've managed to get hold of him. I put in a contract offer, didn't go crazy on the contract offer, and he said yes. So I can't complain. We've got Andrea Bellotti. Again, he's probably going to take Bamford's spot in the club. Um, again, I thought we were going to sell Bamford, so I was kind of like, well, if we're selling Bamford for 20 million, which is what I thought we were selling him to, um, then basically I thought we were going to be fine. Um, but unfortunately, Bamford didn't go, so we do now have two top-level strikers. One more top-level for the championship in Bamford, but again, Bellotti can do it in the Premier League. We know from previous saves and we know from everybody else who plays football manager, he can do it. So a free transfer with the wage budget that we had, it made a lot of sense. So we brought in Axel Twanzebi on a free. Um, because we lost the likes of Strick, who went to Porto, and Lorente, who's went to Olympiacos. Um, and to be honest, again, he's not like a major coup in terms of like, oh my God, he's a world, he's a youngster talent who's gone for free. But in terms of the amount of money that we spent on him, absolutely zero. The contract we spent was dirt cheap. And in terms of what he can do, I think it's kind of a no-brainer, really. Napoli picked him up on a, on a loan for a reason, and I think he'll do bits in the championship and help us get promoted straight away. So to the first of our transfers where we actually spent some money, and we spent money on Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Don't worry, though, it wasn't a lot of money. It was only $2.2 million. Um, basically, he was at the end of his contract, but a few teams were sniffing around, so I was like, I'll just put the money in, we'll get hold of him, and then basically we've got a good option at left-back because a couple of our left-backs weren't really meeting the standards that I needed. And hopefully, with a good preseason and a and a bit of a run in the team, he'll be able to start reaching that potential we know he can reach. So yeah, let's see what we can do with Maitland Niles over the course of these first two years. Then we brought in Carney Chukwuemeka. I think I've pronounced that right. I apologize if I've butchered your name, sir. But we brought him in on a loan from Chelsea, um, mainly because I was looking for someone who can have a bit of vision and be a bit play of a bit of a playmaker role in midfield and um, because we have a lot of defensive midfielders and box to box or ball winning midfielders but not really anyone that can thread a pass or pass the ball all that well um not at, the, at least at the minute anyway we did put a few bids in for a couple of different midfielders but they all sort of fell through because bigger teams came in in high divisions and with where we are at the moment as Leeds United we did have a tricky spot so we brought in the this young lad from Chelsea and yeah, I'm sure he's going to do bits for us and will help Chelsea develop him into a proper first team player. And then into this young starter that we've brought, we brought in Ivan Fresneder um, from Valladolid. I, I cannot get to foreign team names correct. I absolutely butcher them. So I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. But we brought him in for 7.5 million. And if you take a look at his uh, stats when we have a full view of him at, at some point in the future, he has... Great stats for an 18-year-old lad. He is someone that we absolutely guarantee is going to develop. Um, and as a long-term option to replace those sort of first-team names we've already got it right back, he's definitely going to be there in the next year or two if he doesn't start fighting for it this season. And then in terms of our biggest transfer outlay, we bought Rodrigo Bacau from Inter Milan. He hadn't really played much for Inter over the course of the season. He made a bunch of appearances for Udinese before he went to Inter. But he was just a one season one different and played one game. Um, in terms of what he can do defensively, he's very solid. He's got 15 in heading, 15 in marking, 16 tackling, 15 jumping reach. He's pretty strong, good on decisions, good on positioning. For eleven million pounds for this sort of central defender, with the experience he's got, I think he's gonna be an absolute steal for us over the course of the next couple of years. His values 
easily double what we've bought for him. So yeah, Rodrigo Bacau is going to be the player of, that's probably going to take up the main central defensive position and be the first name on the team sheet every week, as long as he stays relatively healthy and injury-free. And then to the fixtures that we've already played in the season. So as you can see from here, our latest fixture is we beat Blackburn 1-0. We didn't start the season off too great where we lost 4-2 to Ipswich, but we have gone on a run since then of four league wins against Swansea, Huddersfield, Birmingham, and of course Blackburn. We've also played Coventry um, in the second round of the Carabao Cup, and we've won that 1-0 as well. So we're doing pretty well in terms of getting leads going early on. I, I'll be honest, when we lost 4-2 to Ipswich, I was pretty worried about the state of things, but we we were fine since then. Um, and af after making a couple more sales, we seem to be in a really good position. So now that the transfer window is over and we've played the first few games, I'm going to sim it till the end of the season and I'm going to come back to you with the results. And yeah, it's gone pretty well so far. We are in second. Obviously, it's a very tight battle at the top um, in this second season in FM23. But, you know, I expected it because of the fact that you've still got the likes of Borough and Sunderland and Luton still in here after the simulation of that first year of Leeds getting relegated. Um, you've then got likes of Palace, Sheffield United, Ipswich, you've just come back into the championship. So I heavily expected it to be a tight race and it's turning out to be the case exactly. And I'm going to show you now the results that have got us to this point and why we are in such a tight race in the first place. So after an amazing start to the season, we got to the middle of September and had our first sort of major clash at the start of the season. And we ended up losing 1-0 to Luton in, a, in that top two clash. As you can see here, it was a pretty even game. We didn't really create enough, but, you know, top of the table, Luton away was a tricky fixture, but I expected to lose it. So then after losing to Luton in the middle of October, we then went on a bit of a topsy-turvy spell in November, losing away to likes of West Brom and Cardiff and people like that, and, you know, not really having great form. But then we went on an amazing run of form in December, and... You know, the only team we ended up losing to was relegation-bound Blackpool, who somehow managed to beat us 2-1 at home. So, you know, we have, we've had played really well, and the ratings of the players are showing us that we are in the right system and we're doing the right things. I just think because we're in the championship, we are finding it a little bit more of a struggle to get out because there are so many big teams in there and so many Premier League-worthy clubs and players playing at those clubs that we are finding it a bit of a struggle. But hopefully, with the second half of the season, we'll be able to get up there. So, I'm going to go through the second half of this season, and I'll come back to you with the results. So here we are then. We're at the end of the season. We've played our final game, and the question is whether or not we have won the championship. Unfortunately, we didn't win the championship. Middlesbrough did. But I am pleased to announce that we have got promoted to the Premier League. We did it with 97 points. Um, yeah, we had a fantastic, fantastic run and end to the season. Southampton got very close with 94 points. Um, the goal difference for Middlesbrough was so far and above and beyond that it was really difficult for us to catch them. But yeah, we've managed to get promoted and got promoted automatically as well. We haven't had to go through the stress of a playoff scenario and thank god we didn't because we've had to have played southampton palace sheffield united sunderland luton were close to it as well all these guys that we were in combat with and trying to get close to and trying to hold on to second and we've managed to do it we've also managed to make a couple of important signings um, in terms of long-term contracts we've got galhart on a contract until 2029 We've also signed Melier, or we've just offered Melier, I should say, a new contract to extend him beyond 2026. So keeping some of these younger players who are, who have performed really well and doing really well for us in the championship and have a bit of potential to grow now as well, if we can solidly keep them in the Premier League, should help us out in the long run. Amazingly, the granddaddy that is James Milner came in with came up clutch with 15 assists. And we have extended his contract to 2026. So he didn't want to leave. He was quite happy with us. 
So why not keep continuing on a good thing? We can use his experience. And if, if he does start to dip a little bit, although you can see his stats are actually climbing a little bit, even at 38, James Milner is a god in these parts. So why wouldn't we keep him? So yeah, let's see what we can do. When it comes to season two, we've got a transfer budget, like I mentioned before, 45 million. That is what we're... It's a decent amount. I think there will be some players that will leave, so that amount will only grow. So hopefully, we'll be able to do something with that. If you have enjoyed this episode, I know it's been a bit cutty, cutty back and a bit chopped and changed and a little bit backwards and forwards, but it is my first time doing these sort of rebuilds, so I did want to do it per episode for the first one so I could just get used to the flow of it. But if you have enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All your support is greatly appreciated. We're well on the way to 400 subscribers now. Uh, I think we're around the 360 mark at the time of recording. So yeah, we'd greatly appreciate your support on it. And stick around for Season 2, where we will be returning to the promised land of the Premier League. And the challenge will be, can we keep this fairly inexperienced and young Leeds team in the Premier League and build from there? So until then, folks, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.